Hello everyone, it is Irene Public Studs and welcome to the Holy Year of LEGO Star Wars 2002. Now this is where things start to really hype up in the LEGO Star Wars world. We're getting our first really good sets. We get the UCS Star Destroyer. We're getting the Republic Gunship for the first time. These are all absolutely insane sets for our first really actually great year of LEGO Star Wars. The last two or three years have been all right, but nothing super special. This year it starts to get really neat. So in total we have 20 sets and a couple of different special packagings, but we don't count those. And this year also saw the first ever re-releases. We had some sets re-released. But overall, we will be ranking these from the worst sets and going to the very, very greatest LEGO Star Wars set. So with that said, remember to hit that subscribe button if you love LEGO Star Wars. We are going through all of the LEGO Star Wars sets and we're just gonna be ranking them on this channel. So with that said, let's get into our 2002 LEGO Star Wars sets ranking. Starting off at number 20, by far one of the worst sets here, if not of all times, at 8009 R2D2 cost $20, it will cost about 30, and one adjusted for inflation in today's money. It's just kind of trash. I mean, look at this thing. It's basically a trash can. Uh, they basically made this just to go alongside the C-3PO from the year before. Um, you know, it's just not a good looking set. It's way smaller than it even looks in the pictures from what reviews I've seen of it. And it's just not cool. It doesn't do many exciting features. Uh, and you know, it's just not very exciting. There also was a combo set of this released with 3PO and R2. Uh, you know, that was released this year, but we're not really gonna be talking about that. Moving on, we have number 19, set 8011, Django Fett. Now uh, he cost $30 back in the day, would cost about $47. This thing would cost $47 in today's economy. And again, this is the same problem I have with say the Stormtrooper. This one just doesn't happen to look as bad. It defeats the entire purpose of the Technic builds. And these are made to be mainly droids. Like, at least R2-D2, you have a case for this to be made, but, like, it doesn't work when it's people. Uh, but either way, he does have a little cool feature. He does have a little rocket jetpack, which is neat, and he can, like, holster his blasters, which is pretty cool. But other than that, he's not very exciting. Moving on from that, at number 18, it's the 8010 Darth Vader at $40. Now, this one, again, I have a problem with the humans, but this one happens, I'll, I'll make an exception for, because it actually they do a decent job with it. Like, it looks cool. Uh, he can swing his lightsaber, as advertised. He can also do a force choke, which is quite cool. And, you know, he comes with a cape, which is kind of new. And if he didn't have the cape, it would be completely ruined. Uh, and, yeah, it's, it's just a neater one. It's not the coolest one. Again, a $63, I'm looking at this thing, I'm like, eh, I'd rather get, say, the helmet set. Uh, but it's not very exciting. Now, moving on uh, to number 17, set 3219, our first ever micro-scale LEGO Star Wars set, described as the mini tie fighter. Uh, our first ever micro build, and this price was not actually certain. I could not find the price for the life of me on this thing, but we could assume it cost around 2 to $3 back in the day. Uh, but now, in today's economy, it would be about 5 That's what the average poly bag type build is going for. I couldn't find the price, so if anyone could find that for me, let me know. Uh, either way, moving on to number 16, it was set 7119, the Twin Pod Cloud Car. This was $10, or as I like to call it, a clown car. Uh, again, it would cost about 15 in today's con economy. The problem with this one is it's just kind of boring. Like, the build, it's it's alright, it's nothing exciting. Uh, and, and the minifigure's boring. Like, the little bot dude, not very exciting, in my opinion. It's just kind of a boring character to have. Uh, as, as an entire set dedicated, I feel like just other sets above this are just better. Not that this is just the worst set in the world, it's just kind of meh. Now moving on is a very controversial set to this day, probably one of, if not the most popular set from this year. It's a 7194 Yoda. Uh, it would cost, uh, cost $100 back then, it would be about 157 in this economy. Uh, now, it's like, you can see the debate here, and it's pretty much at 15, it's on the lower end of the list, it's just kind of creepy, uh, but it's also like kind of cool, I like a lot of the build, it's just the eyes, they mess up the eyes no matter what you do with these types of things, it's difficult uh, to replicate eyes, but uh, honestly, I don't know how I feel about it, I, I like the parts I like, I don't like the parts I don't like, uh, so I'm just gonna put it smack dab here at 15, but moving on, we have another one, which, you know, is all right at number 14. It's at 8012, the Super Battle Droid. It cost 35 back in the day. It would be about 55 adjusted for inflation. Uh, and he's kind of cool looking. He does have both of his arms, which you can prop up or you can put down to fire. Uh, you know, just a cool thing. Again, it works really well with, say, the Battle Droid, which you guys know I'm actually have a little soft spot for. I believe that was back from 2000. And, you know, it, this is just great. A great little thing. 
nothing crazy, nothing super ingenuitive. He's more blue than gray, which I find interesting. And I never really understood the bluish super battle droids. And nobody got that. I didn't get that. But either way, moving on to 13 is one of the weaker minifigure based set builds or ones that, you know, focus on minifigures. 7200, zero, zero, the final duel one. Now, they, they did these in like two sections, and we'll get to the second one later on the list. Uh, it would cost about $7 back then, about $11 today. Uh, and it's really cool. You get Darth Vader and Palpatine, great, great cheap ways to get them. Uh, the problem is we did get them in a minifigure pack just the year or two prior uh, in, the, in the Sith minifigure pack, and they were much cheaper back then, uh, you know, and it was basically $2 cheaper. So that's why I'm kind of more biased towards this one. But as a set itself, it's solid. I just feel like the other ones in the future are better. Now, moving on to number 12, we have 7203, the Jedi Defense. Again, cost $7.00 back in the day, and it would cost about 11 now. Uh, and it had two new droidkas, which were really cool, and young Obi-Wan, which again was great. Thing is, this one just is not the best value. I feel like a lot of the other sets in this $7 price range back then were just a better value. The droidkas don't make up a ton of substantial pieces, so it really felt like something was lacking from this. I understand what they were going for, especially because of the set that comes alongside it. Uh, but, but either way, it's just not very exciting to me. Now, moving on to number 11, we have set 10026, the special edition Nabu Starfighter at $40. Um, now, you think, oh, studs, this would be way higher. This one looks cool. Uh, and again, it costs $63 in today's money. This set has probably one of, if not the worst, price per piece ratios ever. Basically, you're paying 20 cents per piece in this set. It's classified, I believe, as UCS. Uh, and again, most of this is specifically for those silver pieces, which supposedly are bad for the environment. Uh, but you know, they do look cool. They look really cool. And it's a really neat looking set. Uh, it was just very expensive for what it was, even, you know, taking into account those pieces. Uh, and, and I don't know how to feel about it. It's, it's a mixed bag of a set because I feel like a lot of people would have it at the top of their list and a lot of people would have it for the bottom. So I kind of took the middle road and it's basically at the middle for me. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a middle of the wave set. Uh, now moving on to number 10, we have set 7139, the Ewok Attack. Uh, which is just a great set. It comes with four figures, cost 13 bucks back in the day, $20 adjusted for inflation, uh, which is about right. Uh, now you do get a Stormtrooper in this, which remember they were not as prominent back then, so that was pretty cool. You're also getting a Scout Trooper, which is very cool. And then you get our first ever Ewoks. We get two Ewoks, we get a dark brown one, and then we also do get a tan one with a brown torso. They both look a little goofy, uh, but I do like what they're doing. They, they did a great job. You do have, again, the speeder, you have the little flyer, which I think is really neat. And then you also have the little launcher. I'm uh, making for a solid $20 set. Now, moving on, we have our first ever Jedi Starfighters. It's 7143, Jedi Starfighter, 20 bucks. Uh, $31 adjusted for inflation, which is about right for what Jedi Starfighters cost today. Uh, you did get Obi-Wan, and I believe that is R4. Uh, you know, not a crazy selection. Again, Attack of the Clones did come out this year, so this was coming out alongside that. We have a counterpart set for that coming up at number two. You guys probably already know that one. Uh, but this is set next up at eight. We have set 7204, the Jedi Defense. Uh, two, this is the second one. It went alongside that droid come one with Obi-Wan. $11.00. Great door. I love that door build, like that you could lift it. That's really cool. Uh, you also do get a security battle droid, I believe the first and only. And then we also do get the other droid there. And then you get Qui-Gon, which is great. Great value. Qui-Gon did come in a cheaper set back in 1999, but that was retired by this point. Um, so this was a great new way to get Qui-Gon and to just get a really decent build. And the pieces were certainly more substantial. Now moving on, we have set 7201 in our seventh spot, the final duel two. This goes along that Palpatine's uh, one that we saw earlier. It would cost about 11 for inflation. This is one of the best valued LEGO Star Wars sets of all time, and you can tell people stocked up on this, uh, especially because like you'll see you'll still see Imperial officers and Luke Skywalker's floating around the market super cheap, while the Stormtroopers are obviously expensive, because this was the first cheap set we got Stormtroopers in. Uh, we did not have really any cheap Stormtroopers before this, and here it is, there he is, right there. Uh, quite honestly, in terms of figure selection, it would have made more sense to throw in the Red Royal Guard. They did come out back in 2001, and, you know, they would have made more sense here, since this was the final duel. Uh, but with that being said, just a great figure selection. You get a plate and some basic bricks. Nothing super exciting here. 
Other than you're getting a great way to army build stormtroopers now, and this is really where it got, began to start, which is very, very cool. Now, moving on to number six, is it 7133, the Bounty Hunter's Pursuit set? It cost $30 back in the day, which was, quite frankly, a lot. It cost about $48 in today's economy, adjusted for inflation. I think it's a tad overpriced. Uh, if I'm being honest, usually I don't like to say a lot of things are overpriced, but this one was kind of overpriced. Uh, it came with our first and only ever Zam Wessel, as well as our first and only of this scene. We haven't gotten the scene again in LEGO in the last 20 years. Uh, and you also get Obi-Wan and Anakin, which was great. Now, moving on to number five, is it 7113, one of the darkest LEGO sets of all time. And this is the Tusken Raider Encounter. It cost 10 bucks back in the day. Uh, that would cost about 16 in today's economy. One of the darkest sets ever, really. Uh, you're getting Anakin, and, and you have Tuskens, and you know what's going to be happening to those Tusken Raiders. You're going to get um, them chopped up. Uh, you know you're getting a Speeder and a Vaporator. I just am shocked that LEGO did a thing based off of a scene this dark. They won't do certain Harry Potter things, which are from far less dark um, things. And this is, this is crazy that they actually did Anakin's dark deeds. Uh, which is really kind of cool. That's why I appreciate it, and that's why it's so up, high up on the list, because we're never going to see this again. Anyway, moving on, at number four, we have set 7103, the Jedi Duel at $10. Again, it costs about 16 in today's money. Uh, first off, this is our first ever Yoda minifigure. Big deal. Let's go. It took them three years, uh, but better late than never. Uh, you know, Yoda, great. He got a special mold. Uh, really cool. Uh, you also do get a little speeder, and I guess that's a charging station or something. I don't know what that is back there. Uh, and you also got Count Dooku with his tilted lightsaber, which was, again, brand new. And I think it's find it fascinating, because if you look at Count Dooku's lightsaber compared to most lightsabers, it's not that different. It's a little curved, but they went out of their way to make their own special mold for him. Uh, and they actually did bring back this exact mold with the exact, like, problem with the, you know, special silver uh, in the 2013 set, which is a little fun fact. And, you know, when we get down to that set, that one's going to be very cool to look at. And again, first ever Yoda. Very cool. Now, moving on to number three. Uh, we have set 7153, the Django Fett Slave 1. Our first and only one as of now. Uh, now, it cost 50 bucks back in the day. It will cost about $80 adjusted for inflation. Uh, and it was cheaper than the 2019 one, which, as far as I'm aware, went for, like, 120 uh, So it's kind of fascinating that this is actually, like, a whole, like, at least $60 cheaper than, say, that would cost, which is, which is nuts. I uh, know you got our first ever Django Fett in this one, which looked very nice. And you also got Young Bobo, which is very cool. And it's a solid set. It's a, it's a solid-looking one. The colors, I feel, are a little off, but all colors were back then, especially those tan. I, I, the tan doesn't work really well with this. Uh, but for our first and only Django Slave 1, it is a solid set indeed. Now moving on to number 2, we have set 7163, the Republic gunship. At $90, our first ever gunship, again, very insane. It would cost about $140 adjusted for inflation. Some of the best figure selection we've ever seen in LEGO Star Wars, period. You got Jedi Bob, our first ever random Jedi, and I believe our only random Jedi that I could quite honestly think of that's been unnamed. Uh, you know, again, that was not his official name. Uh, you also did get four clone troopers. You got uh, three in the gunship. You got one fighting alongside Bob. Uh, and then you also did get two of the blue super battle droids and a droidka. Uh, and, you know, this is a revolutionary set because gunships are obviously very popular. Uh, and this was the first real troop carrier that we got in LEGO Star Wars, so it was immensely popular back in the day. It's not the best gunship design we've ever gotten. It, there's not a lot of technic involved, so it's way more fragile from what I, I hear. Uh, but it's still a really neat set. Now, either way, moving into one of the best sets that still, I believe, short of the piece coloring, holds up to this day. Set 130, the Imperial Star Destroyer. $270! For this, for instance, the new Star Destroyer costs about 700 and if you adjust it for inflation, this one would cost about 425 which is still like close to 200 less than what the current one goes for, which is absolutely insane. You're getting an amazing value out of this thing. It is a beautiful display piece. Again, the only problem I see with this particular set is its coloring. Uh, and that's just because it was time period. Uh, when LEGO had the gray back then, it was this weird color of gray. If you just translated that into modern parts, it would look absolutely sick. And it is by far, to this day, 
one of, if not the best valued Lego Star Wars sets of all time. They also did come with a little tantive. There was no crazy interior detail, no minifigures, no fluff. Just a beautiful model. One of the actually first best models that we've seen out of Lego Star Wars. Uh, and, and I mean that. Like, it could go alongside the modern 2016 Falcon. The UCS X-Wing from 2000 can't do that. This one can, because it looks absolutely sick. And it, to this day, is still, I believe, a massively underrated set. So UCS Star Destroyers always get the shaft because they're giant triangles that are gray and usually they're dust collectors, which they are, but this one's a cool dust collector. And it makes me wanna buy the new one so much more because I can actually still afford it. This thing, very expensive online. But either way, I wanna hear your guys' thoughts on the LEGO Star Wars 2002 sets. This was an insane year for LEGO Star Wars, and lucky for you, it only gets better. So stay tuned, hit that notification button if you wanna stay up to date on all my latest LEGO Star Wars videos. The Skywalker Saga is coming out soon, so get excited for that. Check out these videos, see you all in the next one. Remember to peace out and stay awesome.